In recent years, there's been a growth of new minor professional hockey leagues in the U.S. Midwest and Deep South. These new leagues are many steps removed from the National Hockey League. Still, every year, hundreds of Canadian hockey players migrate south in the hopes of keeping their dreams of playing professional hockey alive. Of all the players who come down here to this part of the world known for stock car racing, football, and professional wrestling, the fan favorite, without a doubt, is the tough guy. The tough guy in hockey is supposed to uh, make sure that the other team doesn't get out of hand. If uh, the other team is playing a little bit rough, supposed to go in and bounce their ass off the, you know, the ice. That's what I'm saying. Ho hockey's all about the tough guy. I mean, we come to see the tough guys beating up the losers. Us fans, we like to, uh, we like to see people fight. That's what hockey's about. You know, crash them in the boards. You know, take care of business. I think it's interesting and it catches the fans' attention. And I just like to see them fight. Hockey is a foreign experience to many Americans. Selling the game requires a certain flair. When the Memphis River Kings moved into this new facility in South Haven, Mississippi, no one at the arena knew how to drive the Zamboni. I had never seen a hockey game on TV, live, or before I started here. I started it uh, four and a half months ago and uh, kind of got, I don't know, pushed into being a Zamboni driver. I think it's an addictive sport. Uh, I've always watched football, and I thought football was, was kind of tough and, and a fast game, but uh, you don't stop for a huddle in hockey. You, you go all out or you don't go at all. Former NHLer Doug Shedden, now one of the most successful coaches in minor professional hockey, knows that fighting can be a valuable tool in marketing the game to a new audience. That's what sells a sport, especially in the South, is... The fans don't know a whole lot about hockey, so but they, they love seeing a good fight. I think fighting has a lot to do with it. Uh, you know, we've got wrestlers around here that people go to see that are more choreography than, than it is actually fighting. Uh, and that sells out just about every time they open the doors to it. I think fighting has, has a lot to do with it. Uh, and I think it has a lot to do with the game itself. Kevin Holliday of the Memphis River Kings started playing hockey on the frozen ponds of Red Lake, Ontario when he was three years old. Moving up through the minor hockey system, he developed a reputation as a physical player. But it wasn't until junior hockey that he became known as a tough guy. It's just a kind of a, a role that I kind of inherited, I guess, since, since I uh, started playing junior. I've kind of always had quite a few penalty minutes and always played a a tougher role. When I broke into to, uh, pro when I was 21, I I came in and, and uh, played the same way as I did in junior. So they figured that, uh, you know, that I could fight and uh, fit into the tough guy role in, in pro as well. And I, the, the tougher I played and the, you know, it seemed that, that the more fights that I would get in, so. Curtis Voth of the Tulsa Oilers grew up on a farm near Riverhurst, Saskatchewan. Curtis showed great promise as a playmaker in his early years. But in junior, he changed his role from goal scorer to tough guy. You don't fight in minor hockey really very much and and stuff, so I was kind of a scorer. And uh, I guess as I as I went up uh, in AAA midget, I fought a little bit. And then when I started going to junior camps, I fought a little bit because you, you know the scouts like to see that. And I think I kind of got labeled because I was fairly good at it, I guess. And People knew that I didn't mind doing it. Four years ago, at the age of 21, Kevin and Curtis left Canada to take advantage of the opportunities these new leagues offered to tough guys. I just came down my first year after junior, and uh, I started out in the East Coast, and I got released, and I kind of bounced around. And I always wanted to play pro hockey, and I didn't really want to go to college. The way that wasn't really my style. I wasn't going to be a college-type player, so nothing else I'd rather be doing for the, I mean, there's no, n nothing else I could do to make the money I make. Well, they're not getting rich, I'll tell you that. Um, you know, a guy like Holiday makes probably 600 bucks a week. They play the game because they really, really love it. The stated goal of these leagues is to help a player advance to a higher level. The reality is, few make it. Both Kevin and Curtis are beginning their fifth and most critical year of professional hockey. After five years at this level, if a player hasn't proved he can either score a lot of goals or win a lot of fights, chances are he'll be out of hockey and looking for a different line of work. I don't want to go out and get a real job. So <laughs> I, I work uh, construction and, and uh, I work in the mine in the summertime uh, at home. It's a, a gold mine. I do labor work and shoveling rocks and jackhammering and stuff. And 
I do that for five months in the summer, and I, I can't wait to come back and play hockey. It's a lot, it's a lot better way to make a, to make a living than doing that for the next 40 years or whatever. So. Curtis is beginning his third season with Tulsa. In each of his first two, he set league records for most penalty minutes in a season, making him by far the fan favorite. But he's a bad boy. The bad boys are the funnest guys to watch. He plays full speed ahead all the time, and he doesn't take anything off of anybody. His vote of most popular player here last year. I mean, the fight in three fights a game, and he's not afraid of nobody, and that's what we pay to come see. If we want to watch finesse hockey, we'll stay at home and watch the NHL. I enjoy beating a guy up probably as much as scoring a goal if you really beat a guy up, like, especially if a guy wants to fight you and you give it, you really give it to him. That's probably one of the best feelings, I think, in hockey. I mean, some guys probably would differ on scoring goals or getting a hat trick or something, but uh, myself, I think that's, that's as big an enjoyment as anything. Oh, I love it. I love watching him fight. I don't know. I don't like seeing him get hit, but he usually doesn't get hit, so. I've never like seen him get pounded or anything. Like usually, it's either pretty even or Curtis by far wins. So it's pretty good. It gets the crowd going, so it's nice. For Curtis and Brandy, life in Tulsa couldn't get much better. For Brandy, who grew up here and whose family remains in the area, there's no place she'd rather raise their children and have Curtis play hockey. Do you want to know our little story? <laughs> um, I was working at Hooters. And Curtis came in one night, and we kind of noticed each other, but I wasn't waiting on the guys. I was waiting on a different section, so we didn't really talk that much. A couple of days later, he came in and invited me to a couple of games, but for some reason, I didn't show up. <laughs> and then he came back and invited me into another one, and so I showed up. And then ever since then, we've been together. When Kevin first broke into the professional ranks, his coach gave him some advice. He's never forgotten it. He just said to me, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna come in and be a tough guy, be a tough guy all the way. You fight whether you feel like it that night or whether you don't. And uh, I just keep remembering that that uh, that as long as you you keep doing your job and uh, and are willing to do it, then uh, you shouldn't have a problem uh, playing as long as as long as you want in this game. Kevin makes no apologies for how he plays the game. He knows he either makes it as a tough guy or he doesn't make it at all. If you have skill, you play with your skill, and if you don't, then you got to find a, a different way to a different way to make a living playing hockey. And uh, if that has to be fighting, then uh, then it has to be fighting. He holds the record in all of professional hockey for most fights in a season with 43. This year, his goal is to break that record. I mean, I'm I'm pretty close now. I have 33 and 33 games. I would, yeah, I would like to, I would like to get the record. I mean, that would be great. Not all tough guys agree with Kevin's approach. Do not, I repeat, do not get pigeonholed into fighting. It's just one long, long nightmare. Mark LaForge of Sudbury, Ontario, made it to the NHL and back as a tough guy. But after 17 years in the game, Fighting for Mark has lost its appeal. As a tool, when you're younger, to get to the NHL, you'll do anything you want. But as you grow older, it's uh, it's very uh, dehumanizing, sitting on the bench and just going out and fighting night after night after night after night. I never fought until my first year junior, where I have basically had to fight. If I didn't fight, I wouldn't play. So we had a team that got pushed around a little bit. So being young and stupid, I figured that'd be the way to get some more ice time. And it, it was the way. I got a lot more ice time, but then. Then I was trapped for, it's been 17 years now. Uh, once you start, you very, very difficult. Unless you're a Rick Tockett or someone like that with a lot of skill, you're pretty much stuck in that role for the rest of your life. Mark earned a reputation in his early years as a tough but unpredictable player. As a junior, he was banned for life from the Ontario Hockey League for his part in an on-ice brawl. There's two, t two kind of guys you're, you're nervous about. The really tough guy, the legitimate tough guy, but he's quiet, like a Bob Probert. Guys are nervous, or... The guy, you never know what he'll do. That's the kind of guy I was. I, maybe I'd fight, maybe I'd stick you. If anything, the notoriety surrounding the lifetime ban helped his career. In the 1986 NHL draft of the world's best junior players, Mark was selected 32nd overall. But it wasn't long after getting drafted that Mark began to regret his tough guy role. 
once I got to about 20, then I start, then it dawned on me. I, I went, hmm, I'm gonna have to, if I do this, I'm gonna have to do this for the next 10, 15 years, every single day. It's no life. I'm older now, my career's done, so I can actually tell the truth. Tough guys are known for having a short fuse, but as Curtis finds out, an uncontrolled temper can be a tough guy's worst enemy. During a pregame practice in San Antonio, an argument with his coach turns into an on-ice altercation. He is immediately suspended from the team. He calls Brandy to break the news. Well, I got into a fight with the coach, but I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a fist fight, but it was an argument, and it got, I mean, we came together, and there was no punches thrown or anything, but yeah, with, with Sean Cluse and the coach. That was a situation where uh, the, short, the short version of it, I corrected Curtis uh, on, on a real simple instruction uh, during a basic drill. Uh, he took offense to that. Uh, a, a bit of a confrontation on the ice uh, started. I asked Curtis to leave the ice, uh, which he started to do, and he turned around, came back, and, and the gloves were off. I might have to get a job or something, I don't know. It's been two weeks since Curtis was suspended for fighting with his coach. He's asked to be traded to a team close to Tulsa so that Brandy can remain near her family. But team ownership has no intention of trading Curtis to any of its closest rivals. With no resolution in sight, his career and his family are in limbo. God, I wish I was playing this game. Come on, guys, I need something, I need something. Take it down. While Curtis finds out the hard way, Mark LaForge learned a long time ago that for him, there are few upsides to fighting, no matter how popular it is with the fans. I've never met a guy who's ever liked to fight. If you, uh, if you get a chance, go to some NHL teams and sit down alone and uh, if they're anonymous they'll tell you the truth but if they know their names are going to be used they can't say they, they hate fighting they'll lose their jobs but I've never met a guy one on one when uh, the game wasn't around that enjoyed fighting ever do I actually like the fight yeah I love fighting at six foot four inches 260 pounds Brandon Christian has the perfect credentials for a tough guy the toughness started I don't know I I guess when I started playing junior B hockey I started getting into fighting. I was a goalie when I played junior B, so the fighting was uh, difficult for a goalie at the time. But uh, if the game was uh, out of hand or we were losing like 5-1, then I'd fight. I used to really just lose it and try to just kill guys, just try to demolish them. That was my whole objective because I had to make a name for myself. And uh, with the fighting role, I got more, more ice time because I think I got more room on the ice. Guys would back away. They know, they know not to hit me or, or come near me because I'd either punch them or hit them. Last year, Christian made a name for himself by getting suspended by the Western Professional Hockey League. In the Western Pro Theory, I think it was just bad refereeing or the league had it in. I heard that because I sucker punched a couple guys that, that uh, they didn't want me in the league. They thought I was going to hurt guys. Well, I was hurting guys. Like, hey, that's part of the game. You know, you're out there to play. I play as, as hard as I can every game. This year, he's a marked man. Uh, if they see a guy slash me and I go over to the ref and say, did you see the guy slash me? You weren't slashed. Yeah, yeah. Nobody slashed you. Nobody slashed you on that play. Everybody was going for the puck. Sometimes they call penalties and sometimes they don't. I think bigger guys have to, to uh, take a lot more punishment than little guys. And maybe that's what makes them tough. Three on one, you're not going to win a fight. One on one, maybe you have a chance. Well, hockey has always been a game of intimidation. And um, you want your skilled players to be able to play every night. And, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Holliday is one guy that you certainly never have to give the nod to. He knows his job. You know, there's never once I've ever tapped him on the shoulder to go get this guy. He, he knows what he has to do. Let's go. Come on, you little Usually I know when it's a, when it's a good time to fight or when it's a bad time not to. I mean, uh, 
Um, but, but sometimes when uh, when stuff's happening out in the ice, some of our guys are getting cheap shot, and I might be on the bench. I might I might give them a look and say, hey, you know, maybe maybe uh, I should go out there and settle something down. And uh, he might just say, well, well, we'll give it one more shift and see what happens. Hey, Peter wants to play with you. Hey, next shift. Four two now. He wants to fight now. Well, he said stay out. You never want to fight to uh, to hurt your team. I mean, there's a there's a time when you can fight and it'll uh, it'll actually backfire on you and, and hurt your team. But sometimes a tough guy has to get into the action, even if it's from the bench. Hey, hey, Just send a message that he's not, you know, no one's going to come and stand by our bench and throw punches at our players. Can't let that happen. Finally, three and a half weeks after being suspended, Curtis learns his fate. He's been traded to Huntsville, Alabama, a last place team with the league's lowest attendance. Being traded is part of a hockey player's life, but moving across the country is much harder now that he's married with a young family. When I started playing, pro hockey like five years ago I really didn't have a, a really not a care in the world I mean other than that go play hockey and if you got traded or released or whatever it didn't matter but it can't be always just about me you now it's got to be like where it's best for my wife and for my kids so he's either going to be somewhere next year for good or we're done playing hockey <laughs> A lot of people think that uh, tough guys are just, you know, brutal fighters that all that just they fight all the time. You know, they they fight on the ice, they fight in bars. You know, you you piss them off and they're just gonna fight you, or you know, or pick they go out in the street and uh, pick fights with people. And it's not like that. I mean, uh, you do a job and it's it's just like any other job. And uh, off the ice, you're just a uh, you know, you're just another regular person. He's a totally different person when he's off the ice. I mean. He, He's not aggressive, he's not mean, he doesn't spit all over the place. <laughs> he doesn't drop the gloves and try to beat up the grocery guy if they get in an argument. He's very docile, very gentle. You're gonna need a doctor by the time this is over, I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna knock your off. Tough guys have several weapons in their arsenal to intimidate an opponent. Chirping or trash talking on the ice is one of them. I chirp out of pretty much everybody out there, you know, tell them tell him I'm going to kill him or I'm coming after him or something like that. I mean, just to maybe throw him off their game a little bit. Want a f***ing goal? You want a goal? Come on, then. Come on. Chirping is not the only way Kevin gets under an opponent's skin. Last time we played him, uh, tried to eye gouge me, and he's pulled my hair twice. Well, there might have been a little bit of something like that. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's garbage. I told him if whenever he wants to fight, drop the gloves and won't go, but don't be poking at my eyes or pulling my hair. Having fought each other in each of their three previous games, Kevin and Curtis have developed a strong rivalry. But his on-ice battles with Kevin are the furthest thing from his mind right now. Well, why don't you just climb back real quick and just see you talk? Because you don't understand how how hockey you know feels. You don't understand. You well, don't, and you're not um, the one with two kids. That's you, no, you just play hockey. That's all you do, Curtis. You play hockey. That's all you do. Off-ice family pressures are taking their toll on Curtis. We came here and things really haven't worked out quite like we hoped. Brandy's family's all back there and it's uh, been really hard that way. On the ice, his team is mired in a horrible slump and he knows he hasn't played up to expectations since his arrival in Huntsville. In Tulsa, where the fans loved him, fighting came easy. But to the fans in Huntsville, he's just another journeyman player. The team arrives in Memphis for a game against the league-leading River Kings. The game offers Curtis another chance to prove himself. He knows a good fight against Kevin will go a long way to restoring his confidence and turning his season around. But in the second period, Huntsville is losing 4 to nothing. Curtis's play seems uninspired, and he's getting little ice time. 
Between periods, Coach Cox berates his players for their poor play. Nobody feels the heat more than Curtis. But Curtis doesn't get a chance to redeem himself. Coach Cox loses patience with his poor play and benches him for the entire third period. Late in the game, Holiday records his 38th major of the season, six short of the record. This is the fight that Curtis should have been in, and he knows it. Getting benched was the last straw. The next day, he walks into Coach Cox's office and asks to be traded. The team has really struggled this year here. There's been a lot of a lot of things going on here with the team, and it just hasn't hasn't been a very good season so far. Thought it would be best if he moved me somewhere for my family and for myself. But Cox is unable to arrange a trade. He agrees to put Curtis on waivers, which means that any team in the league has 48 hours to claim him. If no one claims him, he's out of a job. Like most players at this level, Curtis doesn't have an agent. Instead, he has to track down coaches and make calls on his own. Well, maybe you should just call Jeff one real quick and ask him to stay because... Well, he won't take my call. Well, it's 5 o'clock. Why don't you just try real quick? Curtis's past has come back to haunt him. After the incident with his coach in Tulsa, other teams are reluctant to take a chance on a player many now perceive to be a troublemaker. Just a voicemail box. I don't know if his office is in Mississippi or if it's in Memphis. Hi, Doug. This is Curtis Voth calling. Oh, not too bad. How are you? Um, I just wanted to give you a call. Uh, I asked asked Craig to waive me today, and I was just gonna get in touch with you and see if if, you, if there's any interest or. Okay. Oh, okay. Scared to go to eat in case you don't get a paycheck for another week. <laughs> what did you just say? I said he's scared to go to eat in case you don't get a paycheck for no, another week. No, see, two of them up there. I'm not yeah, worried about it. Just joking. <laughs> you better have a job before that. The waiver deadline comes and goes. No team claims him. Curtis is now out of a job. Two days after his release, Curtis is still without any job prospects. To complicate matters, he and his family must vacate their Huntsville apartment to make room for a new player coming in. Finally, Curtis gets the break he's been hoping for. With Memphis locked in a tight battle for first place, coach Doug Shedden is looking to add some more toughness to his team. He wants to sign Curtis as a free agent. You know, I think he could be give a you know an, another lift because uh, I think Wolves are always better when they're in packs. So, uh, you know, lots, it's better to have many than just one. It's Curtis's first game with Memphis, and he wants to make a good impression. He sets the tone early with aggressive play. Later, when a tough guy goes after one of Memphis's goal scorers, Curtis knows what he has to do. But as soon as the fight starts, it's clear something's wrong. Curtis isn't throwing any punches. His left hand gets entangled in his opponent's jersey. When the jersey twists, Curtis's hand snaps. A broken hand for any hockey player is a serious injury. But for a tough guy, it could end his career. When you're younger, it's kind of a, it's kind of a thrill, and you don't really mind fighting because you're young. You you don't really think about it about getting hurt. As you get older, and uh, you're making a lot more money, fighting doesn't seem as much fun because you get more mature and you realize how uh, not very bright it is. 
If hockey gets rid of fighting, I don't know what the game's going to turn into. It's going to be a lot of stick work like it is now. Like, I think they should increase the fighting and let guys fight it out. Brandon Christian was brought to Indianapolis for one reason, to intimidate. Tonight, he's up against one of the toughest fighters in the league, Marty Melnichuk. The guy's an idiot. I don't know. I don't, I don't like him. I haven't, I have never talked to the guy personally. I didn't like him from when I seen him. And uh, when I first got on the ice, I started skating around. And he was like staring at me like he wanted to fight me right there in warm up. So I don't know if you guys saw that or not. I shot the puck at him. I was like, what the f are you staring at? Like, why are you staring at me? You know what I mean? Nobody likes to be stared at. Like, I don't know. It just from that point on, I just had no respect for the guy. Walk and roll for shift. I told him the first period, and I told him, I'm not supposed to fight you. Coach Raj said, you know, I don't want you out there fighting if you, unless you have to. He said to me that before the game, and then we're on the bench. He said, I don't want you fighting. I'm like, well, you know, make up your mind. You know, you either want me to fight or you don't want me to fight. I don't want you fighting. I said, I'll fight you third period, I think I said to him. And he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't take that. He's just so stupid. I try to change my role this year. I try to be a player and not not necessarily be the enforcer. You know, but it didn't work. <laughs> Tough guys aren't known for turning the other cheek. When Christian is punched in the face from behind, he goes after the smaller player, despite telling Melnichuk he can't fight. Melnichuk is enraged. Moments after getting out of the penalty box, Malnichuk gets Christian to finally drop the gloves. I, I might have lost the fight, but uh, I think I still can beat him up pretty bad if I get another shot at it. But he never gets another shot. Immediately after the game, Brandon's cut from the team. After breaking his hand, Curtis is told by his doctors not to play for four weeks. But only three weeks after the injury, Curtis is back in the lineup. The With a brace on his hand, he's not supposed to fight. But the season's almost over, and he's determined to prove to Shedden that he can still play tough. I won't be able to, won't be able to fight or anything, probably, so it'll be kind of tough to stay out of trouble. In his first shift, Curtis is true to his word. This elbow he throws almost starts a full-scale brawl. Get in there! Get in, Leading 5-1 to one in the third period, coach Doug Shedden imposes a no-fight rule on his players. But as he's shown before in his career, there's only so far Curtis can be pushed before he retaliates. Shedden is not impressed. He sees Curtis's actions as a breach of discipline, not a sign of toughness. Curtis's career takes a backward step at every turn. For professional athletes, injuries come with the territory, but the toll on tough guys is brutal. I've had fights in the past where my hand has been blown up like a balloon. It's been so swollen, and uh, uh, I've been out on the ice, and the guy's been have come up to me and said, hey, let's go, and drop their gloves in front of me. You know, I, I would never turn down a fight. Yeah. Sometimes you're forced into a fight, and uh, sometimes your hands are, are beat up beyond uh, 
you know, you can hardly even even punch. You hit a guy every time you, you throw a punch, it, it just it hurts all the way up to your shoulder, and uh, you know it's not it's not fun. You, you throw uh, three punches and then try and kind of wrestle the guy and throw him down because it's it's just it's too much pain to, to keep throwing punches at a guy's face or helmet or head. As much as I can straighten it right there. Uh, some people down here are kind of they ask once in a while if it's if it's real or if it's like WWF, and uh, I mean it's it's nothing farther than farther away than WWF. I mean uh, a hockey fight is very real. I mean the, your hands take a beating, and, and I've broken my hands uh, many different times, little little cracks and fractures here and there, and from hitting a helmet or a forehead or uh, or the back of the head. <laughs> With only a few weeks left in the season, Kevin's body is breaking down. His injuries force him on the sidelines, jeopardizing his goal of breaking the record for most fights in a season. Chipped a couple knuckles and uh, pulled, uh, pulled or strained some of the muscles in between my fingers. Can't really hold my stick or squeeze it very much, so I can't really shoot a puck or pass. So I won't be playing tonight, and I guess we'll have to see about this weekend. My dad keeps telling me that uh, I'm going to be in some pain when I'm older, so I don't know about that, but I'm, I'm sure he's probably right. This one doesn't really straighten <laughs> as much as I push on it. It's uh, a little bit of uh, arthritis, I think, in there, these couple of fingers. I think when he's 50, he's going to be a very sore man. Yeah, probably. Just have to tape a shovel to my nubs. <laughs> I can dig, dig ditches that way. Then when I'm done work, just get someone to tape a beer against my wrist or something. <laughs> Pound that down. I've only been, well, quote unquote, hurt maybe twice in my life. Uh, a guy by the name of Mike Ware. I ended up playing with him later. Knocked me out in Cornwall. So that was that was a different feeling. And then uh, one of my first games in the NHL. Uh, Darren, a guy by the name of Darren Kimball really taught, some, taught me some manners and uh, cut me wide open. And that, that really that affected me for about two, three years after that. I was nervous. It was the first time I really realized I could get hurt. I don't think fighting-wise that uh, I can ever get hurt uh, bad enough that it's going to, you know, you know, make me quit. I don't think you can you can be a fighter if you're going in there scared that you're gonna that you're gonna get hurt or get injured in some sort of way. If you're if you're scared about about things that that could happen, I mean, then you're in the you're you're in the wrong job. After being out for two weeks with injuries and with the record in sight, Holiday's looking to make up for lost time. Let's line up on the corner over here. Keeper, going to point, buddy. Petey. I don't even think we're facing off. fight was over pretty much. He was saying good fight, you know, and the refs kind of broke it up. And my arm was free. I was, I was wound up, and I, you know, you can't stop yourself. I took another punch and hammered him in the eye, cut him open, and looked like his cheekbone went in, inside the other way. And you either hit him or he's going to hit you, and I just 
I seen, you know, my arm was free. I see opening to hit a face, and I hit him, you know. It's, the guy's an honest fighter, and he, you know, came out and he fought me. And, you know, he's not as big as me, and he, he loses most times I fight him, and he comes out anyways with his team down and, you know, gets in a fight, and I do something cheap at the end like that. Well, I feel too good about myself. It's dumb. Memphis travels to Tulsa for the final game of the year. For Kevin, it's his last chance to break the professional hockey record for most fights in a season. Well, I got one more game to play. I wouldn't mind getting in a in one fight or two and try and break the the record's 43, and I'm tied with it right now. So I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind breaking it this year and being so close. I mean, it's it's hard to get you know 43 fights. For Curtis, it's his first game back in Tulsa since the trade. Uh, been waiting all year pretty much to go back there. Got a little bit of a, I don't know, call it revenge, I guess, against, I guess not so much the players, but just the, the coach and the, the owner, mostly the coach. But there's more riding on the game than settling a score with his old coach. Curtis still has to prove to his new coach that he has what it takes to play for the Memphis River Kings next season. Where's Patty? On the bench, Bobby. On the bench, Ernie? As game time approaches, Curtis is having problems with his tie down, the strap which prevents a player's jersey from being pulled up over his head in a fight. For Curtis, it's come down to this. He lines up for the opening faceoff against Carlos Soki, the tough guy Tulsa brought in to replace him. Curtis's tie-down strap doesn't hold. Soki gets Curtis's jersey over his head. A clear defeat. You next? You, you next? You next? Let's go then. As soon as the puck drops, Kevin goes after Dallas Anderson. It's his 44th fight of the season the new record. And 10 minutes later, he notches his 45th fight, this one against Carlos Soki. Tough guys always stick up for other tough guys. There's no fanfare or ceremony at center ice, but Kevin accomplished what he set out to do. With 45 fights, he's broken the all-time professional hockey league record for most fights in a season. Five months ago, standing at this same place as a member of the Tulsa Oilers, Curtis was at the height of his career. This is not the way he thought his season would end. The playoffs are soon to begin, but enforcers usually see little ice time in the postseason since teams now focus on defense and discipline. For tough guys like Kevin and Curtis, the season is effectively over. I guess I have some regrets. I mean, I've, I've met some great people, I've been to some great places, so I don't, on, from that point of view, I have no regrets. But looking back now, I wish I never would have started fighting <laughs> because back then I was like a good skater. I was rated high in the draft and uh, could have gone to the Olympic team. So, 
Ips and buts, ips and buts. Being able to fight and take care of myself and my teammates. Like, uh, I love the role. There's no doubt about it. I wanted to do that when I came out of net. I wanted to be the tough guy. I wanted to make it to the NHL. And it's still a goal for me now. I'm 20 years old, and I still want to make it there. I don't know. I don't know how long I'll keep playing. I guess it depends what... I guess it probably depends how things keep going. Our kids will be in school and stuff, and I definitely going to need a little bit more stability than being traded once or sometimes twice in a year or if my wife wants to get a job or she wants some stability in her life as well. So, I mean, I can't keep playing and dragging the, my family all across the country. I'd like to do it for as, for as long as I can, but I know there's a there's a time limit on on your body and uh, and how long you can play. And uh, when that winds down, I know that uh, it's hard for a lot of guys to to get out and and actually find a a real job, you know, and where they're you know sitting at a desk for 40 hours a week or or uh, you know doing labor work or 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 whatever they they choose to do. But but uh, whatever it is, I know I, I won't be as happy as I am playing. That's for sure.